everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com, and today we are going to be doing some very simple rigging. This is like an intro to rigging, uh, and uh, the first thing we're going to go over is uh, the two different types of rigging. We have uh, FK and IK, and it's forward kinematics and inverse kinematics. So let's just go over what that means. We'll come back to Mr. Hamburger Guy. Uh, so forward kin uh, kinematics is basically no kind of rigging whatsoever. You really don't have to do anything. Uh, so let's just set up like a robot arm here really quick. And uh, so we'll have the arm here. And then we'll duplicate this, move it down. And we'll have, it'll be like the forearm, right? And then we'll have the hand. And basically, uh, if we just rename this, this will be hand and forearm and upper arm, Not upper aim, upper arm. And uh, so basically what you do to have everything kind of move uh, as a group is you just make everything a child of one another. So the upper arm would be a child of the forearm and the hand would be a child of the forearm. So we got the upper arm, forearm, and hand. So this is a forward kinematic setup, meaning that if I animate any stuff like this, uh, it's gonna affect everything forward. Uh, and actually, if you wanted to really set this up correctly, you would want to set these uh, anchor points where you'd want the bending to take place from. So let's go ahead and do that. So here's the upper arm. Our anchor point is right there in the middle of our object. We want to move it up. I'll go into my anchor point edit mode and just move it up where I want the pivot to be, so right about there. Same thing with the forearm. Kind of move this up where like the elbow the elbow rotation pivot point would be so like right there perhaps and uh, with the hand uh, we'll just move that towards the wrist so now we can then rotate this and it'll rotate correctly like how we'd want it to go so if we wanted to animate this hand uh, we would then have to like keyframe each thing and then we would rotate like this. So forward kinematics is exactly this, where to uh, animate anything, you would start with the main parent object and that would move everything underneath it. And then you would just slowly uh, have to move down your chain. Inverse kinematics is the exact opposite. And how that goes is, so the shoulder, the upper arm is the thing controlling everything, but in inverse kinematic, where you move the hand controls everything else. So let's just, uh, so we got all this set up. <clears throat> so let's do a forward kinematics here. And to set that up, we're gonna actually need to use some of the character tools in Cinema 4D. And the thing you wanna keep in mind is when you set this up, usually, you know, when you see people doing modeling or anything like that you see them uh their characters kind of making a a t so like the arms aren't by the side they're more up like this uh and maybe up like this so they're at the side and the hand and the legs are completely uh vertical but the arms are always horizontal and why that is is because uh, it makes it a little easier to uh, kind of rig. So the the main thing you want to keep in mind is you have your pivot points in the right uh, area uh, and <clears throat> and you actually when you want to do this rigging you want to give the Cinema 4D uh, rigging, the IK rigging thing, a little bit of an idea of how you want your object or your arm or whatever chain of objects you want you want to you want to give it a little bit of an idea of where of how it's going to first bend so usually when i'm building like say that so this is an arm and i know i want to have the original or the uh the arm kind of bend maybe like this i want it to bend like this primarily and not 
like this from the start. I'll just give this a little tiny bit of a rotation just so the cinema, uh, cinema 4D will kind of recognize that, that tiny little bend, and that'll be the, the first position that will be, or the first rotational axis it'll be uh, rotating. And, I'll sh and this will make a lot more sense when I actually go ahead and add the IK. But how you add IK is you need to select the first object in your chain, which will be this upper arm, and the hand, or, or the last object in your chain. So I got the top and the bottom. And then to add inverse kinematics, I'm gonna go to character, I'm gonna go to commands, and I'm gonna go to create IK chain. And what that does is this creates a goal. And if I move this goal, you're gonna see that, hey, my hand is now controlling all this stuff. So this is inverse kinematics. So remember forward kinematics, when I move the shoulder, it moved everything else. But now when I move the hand, it's moving everything. So now I can move this uh, down and stuff like this, but you'll notice, uh, you know, when I said that you wanna give Cinema 4D a little bit of an idea of which way you want that elbow to bend, you can see that it's bending that exact angle. The elbow is pivoting or uh, pointing towards the rear there, and that's because I gave it a slight rotation uh, when before we added the kinematics. So, uh, and you'll notice that once we kind of, what if I want to have this object down by the side here, you'll see that the elbow is kind of pointing in an odd way. Well, to fix that, uh, that's actually called our pole vector, where our knee is bending or where our uh, elbow is bending. You can see the pole vector down here is set to auto right now, and we also have the t this twist. So not only when you animate like an arm, you also have to keep in mind where you want your elbow to uh, point to. So if you want to do a wave, uh, so you want the arm to wave, that doesn't really look like a wave, right? We need to adjust the twist here. You kind of twist and make sure that our pole axis is pointing down. Uh, and right now it's set to auto. So now you can see when I'm doing this, now it kind of looks like the guy's waving, like, hey. So this is just kind of like a crash course, and you'll see that actually it's still bending in the wrong direction. So maybe if it's a little closer to 90, yeah. And so on top of that, that's set to auto, right? So that's auto, but what we can actually do is use an object, uh, and we can actually add a pole and use a null uh, that actually controls where our pole will be. So basically where our elbow will be pointing. So I can kind of move this around and say, okay, he's waving now, cool. Uh, but what if I want him to kind of shake someone's hand, uh, kind of move it down here. And that still works to an extent, uh, but what if I want him to kind of like put his arm on his chest or something like that. I would need to then move the pole vector forward. And then you can see that, you know, it's not only just moving this goal and moving that hand, but you'll have to do a lot of animating of this pole as well, just to get that, that uh, elbow pivot the way you want uh, it to uh, point to. So when you're animating an arm or a leg, you'll need to be animating both the hand goal in the arm pole. So uh, when it comes to characters uh, in very simple uh, cartoony type characters where you have uh, just a, uh, so let's go to our hamburger. So when you have something simple like just a, this is just a cylinder, right? So my legs are just cylinders uh, or a capsule and so are my arms. So let's go ahead and do something very similar and set up some IK for uh, the arms and the legs. So I'm just gonna delete everything right now. And we're gonna do the same thing. Instead of using uh, geometry, what I'm gonna do is set up uh, IK uh, using, uh, so let's just go back here. You'll notice that the limitations of this method is the fact that uh, you have this sharp elbow, but if I want more of a bendy kind of cartoony elbow, like think of like a, 
piece of macaroni that you know has that curve that will arc. Uh, that's what I kind of want to build, and that's what I'm going to show you how uh, uh, how to do that right now. So we got our hamburger man. We're going to do the same exact thing, only instead of using objects or cubes, we're actually going to use a spline. So just a simple spline. Uh, so what I actually want to do is go to my overhead view here. We're going to make the left arm. Yeah, that'll be the left arm. And we're just going to grab our spline, our pen tool. And again, just like we did uh, creating the arm with the little elbow point, uh, we're going to do the same thing only with the spline. So I'm just going to place a first, my first spline point where the shoulder is going to be. Then again, I'm going to put the second point where the elbow is going to be. And again, we're going to want to just give the IK just a little bit of information as to where we want our elbow to point to initially. So I'll just place the second point, the elbow point, just a little bit angled right there. And then the hand I'll just place right here. So we have our elbow bent a little bit and behind, uh, facing behind. Uh, the back of our little hamburger dude. And uh, so there's our spline. Now let's just close that up and I'll just rename this L arm spline. Now to actually uh, apply IK to the spline, uh, we're simply gonna go and just right click, go to character tags, go to IK. Now what we can do now, now let's actually make sure we position our arm correctly and I have a uh, center axis to uh, in my little dock but you can find that using the commander which is shift C and uh, just center axis to and what that's going to do is just center the axis of uh, the spline or whatever object you have to the center of it so let's just go ahead and just move this up to where our little hamburger dude's arm should be, right? So right about there, that looks good. Okay, now back to the good stuff, back to the IK stuff. So we have our spline, we have three points. We're gonna go into our IK tag here, and you're gonna notice we have this point IK option. Now what this is specifically gonna do is use points of a spline to create IK. So just like we did with the axis centers, of our cubes uh, in the, the little cubey arm example I showed you, we're going to use points as the same kind of anchor uh, center anchor points. So I'm going to uh, turn on this point IK. And the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to go ahead and uh, adjust the start and end. So these are the start points and the end points. So just like you had to uh, when I showed in the cube example, you had to select the first object that was your shoulder and then the last object that would be the hand to create the IK. We're doing the same thing, only we're, we're defining the start point uh, and the end point of our uh, point IK or our, our spline IK. So the start is default zero and the end is also default zero. So the start, how points work is that it doesn't start at one. It actually starts at zero. So this first point we set is point zero, our elbows point one, and then our uh, third point is actually our second point. So zero, one, two. So for our end point, it's actually gonna be two. And you can see when I placed uh, the number two in there, we have this familiar green uh, little line in here. So now what we can do is manually add a goal so here is our goal and let's just rename this l arm so left arm goal and this should work exactly like uh the little cube example except we're using a spline so we have this really uh pointy bent elbow here so i'm going to undo this undo that go back to our original position uh, and actually what we can do, so if we, if I do make a change like that and I want to get back to this original position, I would have to undo. But if I want this to be the original position, I can actually make these coordinates all uh, zero if I freeze 
the coordinates or freeze the transformation. What that's going to do, if I hit freeze all, it's going to move all those coordinates down to here. It's going to store them. So now if I want to you know, move this around, do whatever I want to do with this, and I want to reset that, I simply just zero out those coordinates. And that's just a really nice, easy way. It's very important when you're doing character animation to you know, utilize the freeze transformation. So you can just easily zero things out and know you're going to get back to your uh, main, your, your main rig, your start rig position. All right, so we have our goal and we have our arm bending. Uh, but again, I want a more cartoonish uh, bend. I don't want this really uh, angular bend on the arm. I want that cartoony, noodly kind of looking thing. So to change that, I can easily go into my arm spline here. And instead of using Bezier, I can do B spline. And you can see that now when I bend this, we have a nice bendy uh, kind of spline now, which is exactly what I want. You right here. And again, we got this nice bendy cartoony thing. And again, we have our elbow facing the wrong direction. So not only do we need to create their goal, so let's zero out our position here we want to also create our pole. So let's just go ahead and add a pole. And here it is right here. So left arm spline pole. And we can position this wherever we want to. So right now we just have a spline, right? Uh, we actually need to apply some dang geometry to this so we can actually have a, an arm. So what we can do to do that is simply, you know, the arms of the, the hamburger were simply just uh, capsules. I'm gonna grab a capsule, and let's just make this about the size we want it to be, and we're going to use that uh, left arm spline with the spline IK, or that, that point IK on it, and we're gonna use that spline with a spline wrap. Let's go ahead and grab a spline wrap, make it a child of our capsule, and we're just gonna use that left arm spline. And again, so our, uh, now it looks like we have, uh, that's carrying a shovel or a, I don't know what it's doing. Uh, so we actually need to go ahead and uh, adjust the axis here. There we go, that fixed it. Uh, and you'll notice that uh, we have a little bunching or uh, the scaling of our capsule is a little weird. So we need to adjust the thickness or the radius a 10 and then all, all that's uh, going on here where our capsule is not very nice and smooth at the end of it is we simply have to adjust the height and as I bring the height down you can see that smooths and rounds that out and that's just because we have uh, the mode set to fit spline and I actually want to uh, clamp this as well I don't want this arm or this capsule to get bigger or shorter or uh, than the, the actual spline itself. So that kind of just keeps everything clamped so its arm doesn't like stretch out or anything like that. So, all right, so let's go ahead and we got our, oh, one other thing to keep in mind is that you want this spline wrap and the capsule to be uh, happening after your spline wrap here. So just for, uh, just the order of operations, you need to have the spline with the IK, and then you're gonna have that spline wrap. So if you had this backwards and you started moving stuff, there's a little bit of a lag, uh, and that's just because the order of operations or the priorities are a little bit wrong. So we just need to make sure that spline happens first in our stack, and then the spline wrap. All right, so we got our spline, Pull. We have our goal. Uh, again, we can kind of zero. Let, let, let's uh, let's have this at the start pose like this. So this can be the start pose. Make his arm move down. You can notice that we're getting a little chunky uh, geometry here. So to smooth that out, we can just add more height segments. And that'll make everything nice and rounded. And again, we can adjust the size so we can get nice rounded caps here on our capsule. So that's looking good. So that's our left arm. And let me just 
rename this to left arm. So how can we create the right arm? Well, we can easily do that by just selecting all these guys. Let's group them together and uh, just uh, rename this left arm group. And what we can do is go to the character mirror tool and just say, okay, we want this to mirror, we'll mirror that. And what that's gonna do is basically just flip everything all together and it's gonna create a second group right over here. And I'll just move all this over because it didn't work exactly as I wanted to. Uh, but you can see that now we have our arm over, we have our right arm now. So we, now we can just go ahead and rename all this stuff. Right arm goal, left arm goal, cool. So now I can start moving this stuff and we got our right arm going. And we can adjust our pull. So if we want him to be waving or something, we can do that. There we go. Or he can be like fist pumping, like, yeah, don't eat me, don't eat me, don't eat me. Okay, we're having we're having fun here. <laughs> so now we have our we have our arms. Let's do the same thing with the legs. So let's go ahead and let's just let's just do this from scratch again. So just so you can get this this workflow down. So let's go this time. Let's go to our right view, and again we're going to create a spline. Do do do. There's a pen tool, and again we're going to create three points, and again, we want the knee to face forward. So we're gonna give our IK just a little hint that, hey, we want the knee forward, so we're just gonna make a little slight angle, and there we go. So there's definitely a visual of this is our knee, and it's pointing that away to the left, or to the front of the hamburger dude. So let's just, uh, maybe his leg's a little bit too long, so. Just adjust the length of the spline, and that looks good. So, now we just do the same exact thing. So this is the leg. Let's uh, just get our axis center to the center there. And let's rename this. So this is the left spline. Cool. And again, right click, we're gonna add the IK. So add the IK tag. We're gonna enable point IK, and we have three points again, so the start's gonna be zero, and the end's gonna be two, because remember, zero is the first point, one is the second, and two is the third point, so it's gonna end at two. Uh, and we're gonna add our goal, and there it is. So this is left leg goal. And you can see, did we do this right? Yes, we did, woohoo! There's our leg, and again, we want nice, smooth, rounded, cartoonish kind of limbs, so we're gonna change the type from Bezier to B-spline. You can actually use whatever kind of spline you want, so Akima, Rakima, you can see, uh, like, let's just bend it right there, uh, and just see what all these looks like. So, cubic, that's cubic, so you get a little bit more uh, of some roundish kind of stuff going, and then here's B-spline. I think B spline looks pretty good. Cubic looks okay too. You get a little bit more of that bend. Uh, but let's just stick with B spline for now. It gives a nice little curve. But just keep in mind that you can use multiple, or you can use whatever type of uh, spline interpolation you want to get whatever kind of bend. So I like this Bowie kind of bend kind of thing happening. Uh, so again, uh, so I've been moving this a lot actually. Uh, but again, I can go in here and uh, freeze the coordinates, and then I can get back to this original set position by just zeroing this stuff out. So we just freeze our transformation, uh, and there's our leg. So there it is. Let's, uh, is it in the right position? Yeah, yeah, our legs, right about there. Um, so we could probably, probably move everything over a little bit. So I'm gonna select the leg spline and the leg goal and just move it over here. I'll be able to see much better when I actually put geometry on this sucker. So when you make a change, uh, so right now that freeze transformation, or sorry, right here, that freeze transformation didn't really do 
uh, we, we just kind of reset that number. So this is actually the start position we want. So we're just going to freeze it again. And now we have all zero coordinates again. So let's add some stinking geometry. Let's make a leg. Not break a leg, make a leg. And this is our capsule. So this will be our left leg. And again, we're going to use a spline wrap. Make that a child of the capsule, the left leg capsule. And we're going to use that left leg spline. Just drag that down there. Again, it's facing the wrong direction. So let's see if positive Y, yep, that works. And now we just adjust the radius. So let's see what the radius of our arms were. So 10, we can just match that. 10, we don't want them to be thunder thighs. So we'll keep them consistent with the arms. And again, we're adjusting the height of our leg here. So we get nice rounded top and bottom here. And you can see that our leg's not connected to the actual dude. So we actually need to move everything up. So I got the leg goal and the leg spline. And move that up a little bit just so it's not just his legs just kind of floating there. Right there. And again, uh, go back to the goal. Reach transformation. Boom. Uh, and now... Uh, and we forgot to add our pole, so let's just add our pole there. Uh, so this is the left leg pole, and just kind of position this the way we want it to, so just about there, that's good. So now we can group all this stuff together. This is the left leg group, L leg, left leg. And so we got the spline, got the IK, and we have the leg and the spline wrapper. And remember priorities, we need the IK to happen first and then the spline wrap referencing that leg. So this is executing first and this second. So everything's looking good. Uh, and now we'll do the same thing. We'll do a mirror. So go to character, mirror tool, say mirror. And this will, this will be our right leg. Aim all this stuff. I know there's an easier way, but I forgot to be able to just rename all the L's to the R's. And I'll just move this over and position this. Should be looking good. And there we go. And now we can just, so we got our arms, our legs. Let's texture these with the little cream color. Doop. And doop. And now... We got our little hamburger dude with his arms and his legs, and he's just a happy guy. He's no longer just limited to sitting there. He can now do some locomotion. So, uh, if you wanted to animate all this, so here's our main hamburger group, right? So let's take our all of our arms and our legs, and we're going to put them in our hamburger group, but the one thing we don't, so if I move my hamburger, everything's gonna move. But uh, what I want to happen is to actually have my legs stuck on the ground. So what I'm gonna do is actually move these goals, the leg goal, out from underneath the hamburger group. And what that is gonna do is be able to, I can now move my hamburger and the arms and legs, or at least my arms and the body, and the legs, the feet, are going to stay stationary. So uh, that's kind of helpful if you want to, you know, have this guy do like do, 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 and have his feet stay in the same position. So keep that in mind. Uh, so that's, uh, but everything else is underneath that main hamburger character group. So the legs, uh, the leg geometry, and the arms. So what if I want to... Uh, animate this guy so typically what i do to you know animate so what if i want to animate this guy waving right so i'm going to use a pose morph and i use pose morph a ton uh for a ton of things mainly for motion graphic -y stuff but pose morph is mainly used for uh, character poses so uh, if you don't know about pose morph be sure to check out my previous tutorials on that subject i'll post them in the uh in the tutorial description uh, but basically, what Pose Morph does 
is stores states of your objects. So, I mean, if I was doing this correctly, I'd probably want to reset uh, my arm here to a normal pose, but we'll, we'll, we'll not worry about that. So uh, I'm going to add my pose morph, and then you get to select what you want to kind of be recording. So we're going to be recording states or recording poses of all of our objects. So we're going to record, uh, basically the only thing we're going to be moving to uh, animate this guy is the main hamburger object. Uh, so the main body of our uh, hamburger and the, uh, the arm goal and the arm poles. Remember, because we'll, every time you animate an arm, you're going to need to animate both the goal and the pole. Uh, so these are basically going to be the things we'll be animating to actually animate our uh, hamburger dude waving. So uh, we're going to need to record the position. So we're going to record the position of the poles and the goals. And we'll need to, let's see, uh, parameters sometimes, I don't know. I, mean, I, I just like p picking things that if, I don't know if I'll need it, but if I do, I'm glad that I chose it. So parameters, parameters is kind of like if I changed uh, anything in here, like any parameters like that. Uh, and we're gonna need to, the most important thing is just the hierarchy because whatever, you, whatever object you apply a pose morph to, so this main hamburger null, if you don't select hierarchy, it's just going to look at changes and storing states of this null. And the null is not really moving. Everything else underneath it will be. So if you check hierarchy, it's also going to store states of all the children objects. So the poles and the goals and all that stuff. So make sure hierarchy is selected. We're going to go to tag. And by default, we already have a base pose. And we have this new pose that we can morph into. So this is going to be, so we already have uh, our base pose has like the first part of our wave. So this will be like the second pose or wave pose two. And basically just this pose, uh, let's go to our left or our right arm goal. And we're just gonna have them wave like this. Like, hey. And uh, I don't think we really need to adjust the pole at all. Pole's in a good position. And let's see what that looks like. So we can adjust the strength and kind of see how that works. That looks good. Uh, and one thing we can actually do is just kind of, let's make sure. Uh, I'm going to actually need to uh, adjust the rotation. So I'm just going to check that. Uh, and I'm in edit mode, so that's okay. I can still make changes and stuff. So when he waves like this, I'm going to then rotate like this. Maybe I just have a little bit of movement in the left arm. Maybe this. So when he's waving, everything else isn't so stiff. Maybe his arm's out like this, because when you wave, you know, your left arm actually moves as well. All right, so see what that looks like. So now he doesn't look so, so stiff. And this is no tutorial about awesome character animation. This is just quick and dirty kind of stuff. So we can actually move him down if we want. Cool. And if I wanted to, so you can see how we have some space here. So really I should go back in. So if I want to make an edit uh, on the actual main body itself, I'm going to make sure I go to that base pose and make a change. Uh, so then it will just kind of carry down to any other poses. So let's go back to the right arm group just move this in so his arm isn't just kind of flopping out there for a reason. Cool. Now we can go back and go to our second wave pose. There we go. He's waving, doing his thing. And another thing to notice about pose morphs is you can have positive strength and you can also have negative strength. So I'm going negative here. So we can have a little bit of like overshoot or follow through with his arm as well. By going negative route, you can see that just the slight movement I uh, recorded in the uh, the body, which is then moving the legs and then the left arm, just adds a nice little element. Doesn't look so so stiff. But again, this is no perfect <laughs> tutorial on character animation. This actually looks pretty crappy, but just so you know uh, how to get using pose morph with uh, 
characters. So now we can just animate this uh, by going to the from edit to animate and then just setting keyframes for both of these poses. So I'm just gonna go to frame zero, hit a keyframe, go to 30 second or 30 frames and go to frame uh, or jack this strength up to 100 and then bring it down to say negative, let's do a negative value this time. So negative nine, and then we'll go, we can even go over a hundred too, but you can see that if we go too far, his arm kind of snaps, be careful with that. So let's, let's see what this looks. So we're at 86 frames, there we go. And he's waving, he's having a good time. We can actually probably speed all this stuff up. Go to our timeline. You go to a pose morph. There's our strength, and let's just make this faster. He's waving more emphatically. So now we can trim our composition 48 frames, really get him waving. Hey guys. So that's basically it. So, uh, what do we do? We set up very simple uh, arms and leg IK by using splines and using point IK, and we have our, we learned about uh, poles and goals and, and FK versus IK and all this kind of fun stuff and using the point IK to create a spline and using spline wrap to make some really uh, simple cartoonish type of uh, arms and legs on our object. Uh, and the thing to keep in mind is that you're not limited to just capsules. You can actually have geometry, so you can actually build this a model of hand or Maybe even use just like a sphere as a hand and uh, you know, use a connect object, connect this with the capsule and still apply that spline wrap. And you don't, you're not just limited to having a capsule. You can actually have some more complicated uh, geometry for uh, your character's arms and legs. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but that is uh, it. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to uh, hit me up in the uh, comment section. I know this was a little bit uh, much. You know, IK is kind of difficult, but hopefully uh, this kind of made it accessible for you guys. Uh, I love, if you've watched any of my latest, uh, you know, GIFs or dribbles or anything like that, I've, have, I've been having a lot of fun with uh, the character animation stuff. So this has just been a really easy way to you know, get me into character rigging and stuff like that without getting too, too deep into it. Um, but yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoy that. I had a lot of fun. This was a lot of fun. Our burger guy's happy. He's waving. He's having a good time. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye guys.